In this module in Chapter 4 on Reproduction, Module 4.6, I will describe and show construction of what are referred to as parity progression life tables. Parity progression ratios, PPR, known more generally in statistics as continuation ratios, are the proportion of females with a certain number of offspring who go on to have additional offspring. So PPR subscript I equals the number of females with at least I plus one offspring divided by the number of females with at least I offspring, where PPRI notes the ratio at parity I. For example, if 100 females have produced 10 offspring and 80 females have produced more than 10 offspring, then PPR 10 equals 85 divided by 100 equals 0.85. In other words, given that a female has produced 10 offspring, the likelihood that she will produce more than 10 offspring is 0.85. This is equivalent to the survival concept in the life table, i.e. the probability, given that an individual survived age uh, X, that they will survive to age X plus 1. This means that the number of offspring or offspring classes can be used as the vertical dimension of the life table that's replacing age X. And other analogs of all life table parameters can be computed from the schedule of PPRI over all values of I. These include NPI equals the probability of advancing to egg class I plus N given that uh, an individual is currently in egg class I. We have NDI equal the proportion of individuals that die in the egg class interval I to I plus N. We have L sub I, subscript I, equal the proportion of individuals that survive to exact age class I. We have NLI equal the number of female days lived in the egg class interval I to I plus N. We have TI equal the number of female days lived beyond egg class I. And then EI equal the expectation of egg class interval attained before death. You note here that uh, I is equivalent to X in the conventional life table, except now we're using egg class. Here's a table showing parity progression ratios for reproduction in Drosophila melanogaster. The fruit fly. I will look at the parameters for the top six egg classes in increments of 100 from 0 to 500. In the first column we have parity for the table from 0 to 500. 400 means 400 egg class 400. The second column includes the number dying in parity I. So at parity 400 there were 28 flies that died between uh, laying 400 and 500 egg eggs. Column 3 contains the number surviving to parity I, starting with the 666 flies, and there were 620 flies that survived to parity class 400. We have column 4 contains the fraction surviving from parity 0 to parity I. For example, 0 0.9309 of the original female uh, cohort survived to uh, a parity class 400. We have column 5, contains the fraction that survived from parity I to parity I plus 1. For example, 0 0.9548 survived from parity class 400 eggs to parity class 500 eggs. Column 6 contains the fraction that survived the parity I that die before parity I plus 1. For example, 0 0.0452 of the cohort that survived to 400 uh, egg class died in the interval 400 to 500 uh, eggs. Column 7 contains the fraction of the original cohort dying in parity class interval I to I plus 1. So in parity 400, there were 0 0.0420 of the original uh, 666 flies that died in the parity interval 400 to 500. The last column, column uh, number 8, contains the expectation of future offspring production at parity I. 
For example, Parity 400 flies, that is to say all flies that laid at least 400 eggs, the expectation of future egg production for these individuals was uh, 797.6 more eggs. I should note that the expectation of future re uh, reproduction at age zero, that is the 1,136.2 eggs, equals the net reproductive rate for this cohort, i.e. the average number of eggs laid by a newborn female. Parity progression methods provides a unique perspective on reproduction that is not available through other methods of analysis. This approach also demonstrates the utility of the life table concept where instead of age, we use parity class as the essential age metric. This ends module 4.6.